In the spring of 2001, after becoming concerned with developmental delays we observed in our youngest son, Harry, I sat with my wife, Margaret, in a neurologist's office at a local hospital. There, very coldly and clinically, the two doctors confirmed our fears. Harry was diagnosed with autism. They went on to paint a rather bleak picture of his future. Even though he was still shy of his third birthday, they told us he didn't understand the beginning and end of a book, that he wouldn't be ready for first grade, and that we probably shouldn't plan on him going to college. Margaret and I sat there reeling, alternately wanting to sob and wanting to tell him that they were full of shit. <laughs> Finally, fighting back the emotion, I told them that we would determine what he was capable of and that he would be ready for first grade. They both nodded at me blankly. And so we left and silently drove home trying to come to grips with the label he had been given, autism, and the three-word prognosis they had bestowed upon us. Imagine hearing that about your child, about your two-year-old. The reality is, this is something an increasing amount of parents hear every year. According to the CDC, Autism Spectrum Disorder now affects one in 68 children and one in 42 boys. It is the fastest growing severe developmental disability in the U.S. But the increasing prevalence is just the beginning of the story. As parents, no matter where we go, our children don't fit in. They don't fit in academically and they don't fit in socially. The depth of worry many parents experience because of the lack of resources and training within our school system is enormous. At the very time this population is growing, Funding is shrinking. Our children do best in one-on-one -on -one and small group settings. And now they're just another burden on an already stressed system. And you know those simple joys of childhood, like birthday parties and playdates? Yeah, Harry didn't get invited to those. He had tantrums, odd behaviors, nervous tics, gross motor skill delay which is a very technical way of saying he didn't have the coordination necessary to kick a soccer ball. He was just different from all the other kids. And different means you don't make it on the invite list. But the toughest thing is the detachment, the lack of eye contact, absence of speech, little or no emotional engagement. Your child is always in his or her own world. A key characteristic of autism is termed perseverance. That's a hyperfixation on a subject or a thing. Harry's area of perseverance was Thomas the Tank Engine. And I know most boys go through a Thomas phase. It only lasts a year or so. Harry's lasted eight. When he was four, all day long, he would either watch Thomas videos or push the little wooden trains along the track, making a chicka, chicka, chicka sound. He had a six-word vocabulary, that soft little sound, and that was it. His world, his life, was on the island of Sodor, where Thomas and his friends lived. One day, Margaret, out of sheer frustration of not being able to get him to engage with her, picked up one of the trains and said, Hi, Thomas. How are you today? Harry's head spun around to look at her. And that was the breakthrough. By reaching into his world, by meeting his friends, she was able to make the connection that began to draw him back into our world. Soon Margaret began to incorporate Thomas into every teaching moment. And this, combined with some amazing teachers who focused on early intervention, really made an impact on him. Slowly over time, his speech grew, his connection with us grew, and his unpredictable behavior began to diminish. With support, he was ready for first grade. His growth continued to the point where we were finally comfortable with him 
participating in organized social activities. So Margaret signed him up for a special needs little league program when he was eight. And I remember sitting in the stands. The ball was hit out into the infield between him and the little girl playing second base. And it rolls to a complete stop. And they both look at each other like, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> and I realized, you know, this is really just for us as parents. Harry has no interest in baseball. And the majority of these kids were not focused or engaged at all. But they were involved in an activity. And we were all sitting in the bleachers on a sunny day. And it was kind of like our kids fit in. China. The one thing Harry did engage with more and more was technology. In fact, he was more comfortable posting comments to YouTube Lego videos than he was in carrying on a conversation with one of his peers. One Saturday morning, I was home working on my laptop, and he became curious about what I was doing using Adobe Illustrator, and he asked if he could try. I said, once I finish up, sure. So I showed him how to use a few tools and then left him alone to create. About a half hour later, he calls me and says, Dad, come look what I did. And this is the exact drawing he had done. The interesting thing is, he had used tools I hadn't shown him how to use yet. And I said, Harry, that's awesome. And he got this huge smile on his face. And he did the fly. It was this nervous tick he had back then whenever he got really happy or excited. So I showed him how to import photos. He starts making these. Funny, right? And he would spend hours and hours, <laughs> yes, hours and hours making more of these. Now, he was the one crossing over into my world. So a few weeks passed, and then the dots started to connect. And I began to wonder, what if? What if that topic that drove you absolutely crazy because you were tired of hearing about it day in and day out was actually the thing you needed to feed? If this worked for Harry, basically using trains as a conduit for teaching moments, could that work for other children as well? We had personally experienced the lack of quality programming for kids with ASD. Could we design an experience that was unique to their needs and idiosyncrasies, something that they would actually engage with? Something they would enjoy? What if we design an experience that delivered on focus, socialization, and a sense of accomplishment? And there was the idea. We could start a technology-centric learning experience for children with autism and then match students one-on-one -on -one with a design professional and develop curriculum and creative projects that were centered on their area of perseverance. If we changed our lens from special needs to special gifts, what might we discover? And so we called our project Islands of Brilliance. We had the perfect team to do this. Margaret had gone back to school and received her master's in special education and was now a teacher. She would lead the classes and oversee paraprofessional support. My business partner, Cindy Thomas, and I had co-founded an agency called Translator, which specializes in user-centered design. Cindy and I used our methodology in order to lean prototype the project and develop the curriculum. Our students would work on an 18 by 24 inch poster that they would take home with them at the end of the session. In fall of 2012, we approached Paul Kroniak at Discovery World, the Center for Public Innovation. Paul enthusiastically partnered with us and allowed us to use their digital print lab to pilot the program without any overhead costs. On the first day of class, based on the students' background information we provided our mentors, our creative teams were able to get right to work. And in the first 90 minutes, they showed that this idea is way bigger in their hands than it was in our heads. As they inhabited our conceptual framework, the wonderful quirkiness of these children began to take over. Their creativity actually pushed the professionals, and the professionals loved it. Now, there's a moment when you know you have hit on something, and that moment came 10 minutes before the start of the second class. Five of our students arrived early, sought out, and sat down next to their mentors, and got right to work. I took this picture the moment it happened. 
If you have not worked with or known children with autism, it's hard to describe the impact of this. Remember, they struggle with focus and personal connection. And they're right before our eyes. They eagerly engaged with their mentors and were completely focused on the task at hand. Our two biggest hurdles, and we were successful in addressing both. Over the course of the sessions, all of our students completed and proudly presented their projects. The pilot was a huge success. We have since done five sessions, with a sixth this fall with multiple classes. We have a waiting list for students and creative volunteers. And we're considering a pilot in another city next year. So I'm thinking you might want to see some of their work. Remember I talked about perseverance. Gabe really likes to ride elevators. And this is a really colorful, fun poster, right? But if you look a little deeper, that's an excellent example of wayfinding. Or if you apply it to digital, that's what we call user experience. Oh, he's 11 years old. Christian imagined this new James Bond film, and it's got Jeffrey Rush as the villain there. <laughs> this looks like it belongs on the shelves at Target. His mom told us that he said about islands, I wish I could go there every day. This is a panel from Miguel's poster titled, The Clown Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> What's important here is that through islands, Miguel was able to translate his love of drawing into Photoshop skills. He loved Photoshop so much this past summer, he took a Photoshop course at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. His school aide has told us he wants to work in the creative industry. This is what can happen when you focus on their interests and abilities and not on their autism. These children are not less, they're merely different. We have found that by focusing on a very narrow vertical, we see all sorts of horizontal growth. They learn true collaboration, sharing and presentation skills, and most of all, confidence. All those things that are generally missing from their primary school experience happen in abundance in our classroom. These are critical things they need to learn no matter what they pursue. I originally wondered what was at the heart of the beautiful connection between our creative volunteers and this group of kids. We have art directors and designers from the top advertising, design, and digital firms in the city participating. Why did they work so well with these kids? And then it dawned on me, to be creative is to be different. To be creative is to dress different, act different, think different. Creative people understand what it's like to stick out, to be odd. And they have one other thing in common with these kids. Creativity is their area of perseverance. And the way these children process and express their experience of the world inspires them. And so it's been a perfect match. Together we've all created this space where these children are given the permission to explore what's possible and where they go home feeling happy. And I remember that day in the bleachers and the sun feeling like our kids kind of fit in. And now when I look around at islands, I see the connections being made between student and mentor mentor and parent, and parent and other parents. And I realize we all sit in the sun together now, and we all fit in. The theme of TEDx UW Milwaukee is generation, why not? We have a choice. We can accept conventional wisdom, what the experts tell us. He doesn't understand the beginning and end of a book. He won't be ready for first grade. You probably shouldn't plan on him going to college. Or we can choose to write our own unconventional wisdom. Because as it turns out, you can create an experience for children with autism where they thrive on focus, socialization, and a sense of accomplishment. This is Harry today. He obviously still loves trains. <laughs> but he's also fascinated by snakes. So he volunteered at the Urban Ecology Center. 
Along with his brother, he's collaborated on an 800-page, yes, 800-page comic book called Cartoon World. <laughs> yes. He's a mainstream B-plus student in his junior year at high school. Yes, he still has challenges he has to overcome. But guess what? This spring, we're taking him on college campus tours. Thank you. <laughs>